everyone. Good morning. I'm really happy here to share our HICOF project at this conference. So I'm the project coordinator. Um, HICOF stands for Highly Informative and Competence Driven Feedback for Digital Learning. So it's a three-year project since 2021. So now it's in the final year. It's funded by the Ministerium for Dig Digitale Strategie und Entwicklung. And we have, there are three partners in the project. So um, the team that I'm at, um, Educational Technologies at the DIFF, at the um, Leibniz Institute for Research and Information in Education in Frankfurt. And also we have our psychology team at the Goethe University Frankfurt and the Studium Digitale team, which is the e-learning center at Goethe University Frankfurt. So first I'll talk a little bit about our project goals um, and then specifically what is the feedback that we want to give to students. So there are two aspects of this. So the first part is the highly informative and the other one is the competence driven feedback. So we completed the pilot study uh, in 2022 and we just completed the evaluation um, this year. Um, and then I'll also talk a little bit about the research design that we used and, and the assignments that we use for these studies, um, particularly uh, the essay um, that students had to write about 10 learning tips and then a collaborative forum discussion task. Then I'll talk a little bit um, about the results, how the automatic assessment of the essay was made using machine learning by um, one of our project members. Um, and then we collected feedback from the students, um, also on their achievement emotions, and on and also we got feedback from the students on the feedback that we gave them. Um, and I would like to share a little bit of those results with you today. Um, yeah, so the the purpose of the project. So the main um, project goal is to provide feedback to students um, and use automatic assessment. And because, for example, in our course, we have uh, 1,000 students and it's really um, time consuming, as you can imagine, um, to grade all of the assignments and to provide um, even normal feedback, uh, kind of very basic feedback. But um, we want to give um, us as informative and helpful feedback for the students as possible so that they can um, learn a little bit more, uh, um, give them more information about their learning process and or their learning outcomes. Um, so we started this project in the pandemic when many students were learning online and from home, um, but um, yeah, even after the pandemic or in other circumstances, there are still many students learning online. Um, so we find that this is a very in, important aspect of the project to, to be able to um, inf inform feedback to students. Um, and according to the literature, so feedback is one of the most important factors for if effective teacher teaching and learning. And, and we see that uh, in the literature, many courses are still lacking uh, individual feedback for the learners. So this is our main um, project goal. And we really want to also transfer the knowledge that we gain from the project uh, to society or to companies or to other universities. And we actually have a team of industry partners um, I think about 12 different companies and universities like Deutsche Bahn, Mercedes and other private or normal universities. And we meet um, with the partners every six months and then we, uh, we share with them our results and we hope that uh, via these meetings um, they will also be able to implement these in, in their companies and in their context. Um, yeah, so what is um, highly informative 
feedback. So there are actually different ways we can give feedback um, based on the learning process or on the out learning outcomes. Um, and in this project, we decided to focus um, on providing feedback on the learning outcomes, uh, mainly due to uh, time and resources constraints. So after we collected the students' assignments, um, we provided uh, feedback on these. Um, and, the, and the feedback was emailed um, to the students via Moodle, so on the online platform. And I would just like to share this uh, very informative um, feed, uh, definition of feedback uh, by John Hattie. So he's the pioneer of, of feedback. And, and he stated that high informative feedback goes beyond feedback on right or wrong. It provides correct solutions, possibilities for improvement, hints on self-regulation and effective learning strategies. Um, and then the other um, feedback that we that we have been giving to students is also based on the competence model that the teach um, that the teacher created for the course. Um, so we call it competence driven feedback because it's it's based on the the course competence model that was created. So for example, for our course, it was a introduction to um, teacher education course. So there are, um, so for example, the first assignment is about uh, foundations of lessons and there are different learning objectives and goals and the skills that students are expected to obtain via via the course modules and then also the assignments that they complete. Um, so for example, um, this, so this is based on the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, knowledge and understanding and an analysis and so on. So we, we give feedback to students uh, based on this competence framework. Uh, so this is set up by the course responsible. Um, consisting of the learning goals and objectives of the course and the skills and knowledge that students should gain after course completion. Um, yeah, so all of the course assignments are associated with a number of learning objectives and the feedback is given to the students based on a calculation of the competences that the students showed in their submitted assignment. So um, just a little bit about the research design that we had. So we had three groups. Um, so before the research uh, project took place, so the course was running, but with um, kind of more traditional assignments. So uh, yeah, so main, they were mainly essay topics and then they were then, um, manually assessed and then in in this project we created some new assignments um and i will just focus on the essay and a little bit about the forum discussion due to the time constraint um, and we had also two different groups uh, one we gave only like kind of basic feedback and then the other group on uh, we gave them like highly informative feedback and then we compared kind of the, the results. And we also collected a lot of uh, kind of psychological um, measures. Um, yeah. And yeah, then I will also talk about the feedback from the, from the students. Yeah, so the first assignment uh, requires students to watch a video. So this is, uh, is a German influencer, Nina, she's called. Um, so we asked students to watch this video and she, where she talked about 10 learning tips um, and, then, and then write an essay um, about these 
tenon and tips against the uh, the module content that was delivered um, to see if if they could um, tell us um, more exactly so uh, what what was in the lecture and if these were then also covered in in the video. Um, so they needed to reflect on what they learned in the lectures um, and if they if the ten tips were covered and write an essay about this. So all the answers we collected um, in the pilot study first, we we used um, them to code. So in in order to build a machine learning model in for the evaluation study. So our PhD student Sebastian Gombert, uh, who's doing his PhD on machine learning, he he did this, um, and then in the re evaluation study that took place um just this year we yeah we we could make the um automatic assessments and send students feedback as well and then the the second task um was the forum discussion collaborative activity so students had to write and some posts in a forum to solve a collaborative activity and in this case, it was um, to compare these two different videos and which one had the higher potential for cognitive activation and, and why. So we collected uh, indicators uh, from the students' posts on the, on the forum um, within different phases of the collaborative task um, and also um, how many words they use, the quality of the words it, that they use, and if they actually, um, you know, how closely matched were they uh, against the topic of discussion. Um, yeah, so we also collected motivational and emotional effects of the different feedback types using different variables like achievement, emotion, and like intrinsic uh, motivation or extrinsic motivation, enjoyment or boredom, and then their perception of the provided feedback as well. So this is, uh, the data of this is currently being analyzed um, by, by our project uh, member, Joshua Widely, Widely, yeah. Um, so now, yeah, so I will talk now about the how we did the automatic assessment. So we gathered 700 essays. So these were written in German in our course. Um, and the vid, yeah, so the video provided 10 tips and each tip were assigned then with 10 codes, resulting in a total of 100 codes. So the idea behind this was to analyze and then segment the essays into sections that corresponded to each tip and then code these sections accordingly. And then I will just show um, like a visual image of, of what I just explained. Um, yeah, to, in order to visualize the segmentation here and, and then the coding process. So these 10 tips were were divided and then coded and um, and then into into these tips here. Um, yeah, so so using this method, um, it was possible to know whether to automatically assess and know whether the submitted essay contained a learning tip or, or how many of them. And then uh, this automatic rule-based rule feedback was, was used also then uh, to tell, to inform the students whether their tip was included in, in the essay or, or not. And then we evaluated this feedback with the students. Um, yeah, so our, our PhD student uh, was working on this um, 
and he and he used different classification models. So he's the expert on this, and and I'm I'm not I'm not an expert in in AI. So yeah, so he used um, all of these different uh, logistic regression, all of these different classification models, and and he found that GBIRD's eye was the most accurate um, for uh, uh, being accurate in in the uh, in the prediction um, of of the results. So so then we use a uh, GBIRD one uh, then for for the um, yeah for for our assessment model. Um, and then we also got um, some feedback perception from the students. And so mostly they were quite um, positive. So yeah, the feedback was helpful for the further learning. Um, yeah, so, so most of them were quite um, positive. And we also had one result that illustrated that highly informative feedback um, helped the students progress well. Um, but some were not significant. Um, so, so we are still uh, analyzing this um, to see whether it's, it's a coincidence or, it, or if, if it definitely had a positive effect. Um, but in, in the reflection, uh, so students also uh, fill in a questionnaire on how how they f perceive the feedback. So on the reflection uh, factor, so this was highly significant that they uh, they said that the highly informative feedback had a strong influence on the reflection. Um, yeah, and it helped them to reflect about the learning activity more. So. So this was very positive. Um, and then, and then on the on the last slide here, I would I, I would just like to share the preliminary results that we have so far from the evaluation study. Um, was that so we had different types of feedback and and their correlation, and that with the achievement of the learning goals and changes in learning behavior. So. This, that's what's our main focus. Um, yeah, so we had we have a lot of complex results which the project team is analyzing right now. Uh, with yeah, with the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation showing very different effects on on different emotions such as hope or or anger or disappointment or yeah or positive effects. On the learning process, um, and um, yeah, so our current project phase is um, the data analysis, as I mentioned, um, and we would like to yeah disseminate our results. So the the whole of this year will be um, just sharing our results in conferences like this one. Um, uh, yeah, and just share what we have learned in our in our project and hopefully also um, help others to, to use it at their university so that it's not just remains a, a research project, but more a practical use um, more widely. In, in Germany, and and the other thing that the project team is working on is to make um, make it more sustainable because um, it is actually was very uh, time intensive to make uh, all of the automatic assessment and the feedback. Um, so we would like to make it sustainable so that even after the project. The, the staff can still use these techniques and the feedback and the assessment without a lot of uh, yeah staff hours. 
Um, yeah, so I think, uh, so the main conclusion um, is that, yeah, so we use some, we use some data anal analytics in our project and machine learning models to analyze student performance and provide feedback. So I think it, it, ho it holds promise for enhancing learning outcomes in education. So the insights gained from the study so far have the potential to contribute to the field of educational research and inform the development of effective feedback strategies for students. And I have a few minutes, so I, if there are any questions from the audience, um, yeah, that would be, I would be very happy if, if I can uh, try to answer these. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. There's uh, one question in the chat. Um, maybe you also addressed it already slightly. It's, um, is the competence feedback related to a specific field or content? Yes, exactly. So um, it would be, yeah, I think for each course or each module, you would need to then make it specific. So it's not a general kind of feedback. So you, you make a competence model for for the course so in this case it was a teacher education course and then it has the assignments like very specific for this course for this course um, and then you you align the the learning objectives with, with this um, but but perhaps it would be possible to to make like a general a general kind of competence model which then you can uh, personalize yeah maybe that would be actually helpful then for for teachers and educators to use okay thank you yeah are there further questions please put them in, put them in a chat did you say something about moodle before how did you implement it there um yeah so yeah it, we it <laughs> this is a uh, so all of this was in the moodle platform and yeah a lot of hours so we have a uh, one programmer in in the team and it, it was a very actually intensive work to implement all the assignments and then all of the analytics <laughs> yeah um and to make the okay we call it automatic feedback but um maybe in the future but but in in the project it was actually not so automatic it was there was a lot of manual uh, staff hours behind making this automatic um so this is the reason why we would like to somehow scale it up and make some ways that it will really be automatic without all of these persons uh, intervening uh, checking each stage of the of the submission process and the feedback process exactly okay i hope that that answers the questions <laughs> how you implemented it there yeah. Uh, I imagine it was, it sounds tricky. Yeah, yeah. Well, we ha we are like a 10 people uh, project team. Um, okay. Yeah. So it was very, and you know, there were 1000 students, right? For um, the, so it was a lot of, um, yeah, it was a lot of work. But hopefully we are trying to make it less work for the teacher uh, in the future. Um, yeah. So the, the the person just came back, to Philip uh, Sertik just came back to a question. He asked, uh, so did you create a plugin? Is there a way to export what you did to another Moodle instance? Um, yes. So the uh, the person Tonica um, from Studium Digitale in the project. So he was, uh, he's the expert on this with the plugins and, and so on. So you, you, it is possible to, export it to another Moodle instance, yeah. Um, 
one more question before what kind of elements uh, did you look at while finding indicators for your your ai when students were working in the forum um for example uh, okay i need to think a little bit um I think mostly were how how engaged they were or or kind of at what time they they posted messages so whether they are leading the discussions or or if they are just repeating what others are saying you know so they're not really contributing they're just kind of repeating what others have been saying so yeah, these kind of um, indicators we were looking at, and there there is a our we have a one master student who worked on on this uh, a whole master's thesis on this, and this will be available quite soon. Yeah, so is so he has already completed, but I think he's working on a conference publication before he he uh releases the results um yeah but his name is Lu lucas menzel and he will be yeah there will be very precise uh, information about this on the linguistic indicators um yeah so he, he looked very closely on what people said um in the forum when how uh, yeah, and some of the results were very, very interesting. So some students were very active. So you can tell whether they are active by by what they say, how they say it, and when they say it. And then there were one group of students that just kind of repeated everything that all the others said, had said, but in a different way. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and but but in the but in this analysis, we we could tell that they were actually not com contributing so much. Yeah, so this was quite useful for, for grading the assessments. Yeah. Thank you very much. Maybe one final question from the chat. I think then we got all of them. Uh, was there any automatic feedback integrated that you focused on uh, writing style or essay structure? Um, so, so far, so far not, yeah. So we we could for for this project we could only um, anal, like automatically assess the ten learning tips as I mentioned and there's the other component with the like APA style but I think this was if I remember correctly this was this had to be graded manually um, at least in the in the pilot study and the, the the structure um but i think i i would double check on this yeah well thank you very much yeah um, thank you also if you look at the chat uh, people say thanks and so, um, thank you so much thank you so much for um your engagement and yeah the wonderful questions thank you we we're very um, glad we had you here and um thank you Thanks to the audience Thanks. for listening and asking questions um, and engaging with uh, Jane Yao. Um, and hereby I close the session. I will send everyone back to the lobby and wish you a further very nice day at the University Future Festival. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye.